this is <laughs> this is our <laughs> first photo that we took um before she flew back for the first time when she came that's when we met for the first time yeah, yeah. and that photo is <laughs> always funny because i just like naturally like put my arm around him like as if like we were friends then like to take a photo and he was like shaking so you always remember that because that was not appropriate yeah. in indian <laughs> in an indian yeah. context first of all i'm from india and i'm from india has a lot of different states and i'm from the state called calcutta or Kolkata, as you would know it by. I grew up in a Hindu uh, family background. Um, I had a sister, I had a brother, uh, and I had my mom and dad. Life was going pretty well, but then there was some chaos in the family. And due to the chaosness in the family, my mother decided to take me and my sister away. Life was hard for her because uh, when we got separated from the family, um, she was the only sole earner of the family, uh, where at times uh, she would lock us in our house uh, so that we wouldn't end up into any mischievous activity in the house. As she was the only sole earner of the family, we could not afford the rent of the house that we were living in so then she moved on to another state and in that in that state it's kind of a tourist spot which is known as puri um, and during the daytime she used to do her usual work um, me and my sister would just be on the beach playing till evening and during the evening when the fishermen used to actually catch fish they would get rid of the small fish and just only get hold of the bigger ones but we would just stand and watch and in India if someone is doing something and a child is watching you out of generosity and love they would actually give away whatever they are actually having with them um, so they would give us the face and we would bring it back home and our mom would just cook it for us and we would have a meal together life was going pretty well um, but one day, um, it was a festival time, which, which is like a very big festival in terms of uh, that state. I and my sister were just playing on the beach and it happened that on that particular day, me and my sister actually ended up while playing on this three-wheeler kind of a... Um, it's more kind of like a van, but it's made out of wood and in olden days with three, two wheels in the back, one at the front for the driver to steer on. We absolutely have had no idea, me and my sister, that we were actually heading towards this railway station. We just jump on the back and we just, just like hold on to it as the guy drives and goes around. That was normal for us. But on that day, something really um, difficult thing happened, which I was unaware of. For the first time, uh, a man approached us um, with this guy who brought us to that station and the man just asked the guy like, oh, if you put these boxes and all these belongings here in the uh, train compartment, I'm willing to pay you. We, we said, we'll do it. So he kept giving us boxes and all, and we went into the train compartment, kept it, came back, but the train compartment was also different. It didn't have doors on both sides. Me and my sister felt a jerk but we were not sure if the train had started moving. And by that time, the other man who actually drove us, he was actually on, on the platform. Um, and by this time, the train had picked up the speed. And by the time me and my sister could actually come into a, towards the door, uh, the train was really fast. We ended up into this massive train station which is known as Howrah station. As soon as we got out of the train, I had absolutely no clue where we were. All I could come across were people just rushing from one station to another, sobbing, pushing, just tapping you on the body, pushing you sideways and just, it was hard, it was hard. And night came and we ended up sleeping on the platform, but 
midnight uh, the platforms had to be cleaned so then you would be chased around by this policeman you cannot sleep on the uh, platform when that is being cleaned having my sister along alongside me was really tough because she was small and i had to carry her on my back everything i did every food i got i had to share with her i joined this train um, like the platform children who were just basically who are lost who group up with other uh, kind of um, platform children from different part of the state and then they form into like a family looking out for each other so they when they saw me and my sister uh, they took interest in us and we ended up with them one day i came back um, it was christmas time mm. one day i came back and i found my sister i i could never afford to give my sister this really fancy dress and everything because i didn't have the money to give her um so saw her in really new kind of dress really fancy dress and i was asking her like oh where did you get the dress from and my sister says like oh those uncle and auntie they gave me to my surprise i was like uncle and auntie i we don't have anyone that we actually relate to so then i went up to this couple and i asked like um, who are you why did you give my sister all this dress and everything and I see they said like oh we love we love your sister and we want to take her to an organization look after her give her education like a normal child and we'll bring her back every week for you to see her and spend time at that moment literally my heart was racing my head was flooded with no 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 but then to see a sister that was literally crying and just unstoppable how could i just say no to a sister that wants to actually enjoy this new dress and the company of these people i don't know what those people did but ultimately i was reluctant to say yes just knowing the fact that at least every weekly i get to see her at least she'll have a better life and opportunity than what i'm having as a street guy and so she went i took the address of the um, place where they were going and i was happy they went um, the next week the exact place where she left i was just waiting there and there and there was no sign of her and it was literally hurting me so badly i'm sorry it was literally hurting me so i thought maybe she's sick or something has happened she's not able to I returned to the ne- the same spot the next week but on this also she did not turn up I'm 24 year old now and since then I've never got to see my sister ever again and life went on there was this big massive hole that was created in my life where I wouldn't accept anyone close to me trust anyone I was waiting for Rajdhani Express which is one of the train that every street children in that how I would actually admire to actually get into it started to be like 9 o'clock rush hour for office and everything and people were just passing by but all of a sudden one man just stepped into in front of me and started to just look down on me and started to sit beside me and talk to me and started to converse with me that was really strange nobody ever does that and he started to engage with me and ask me do you want he said the exact word that i had to hear from those couple who took my sister away and he said the exact word that he's going to give me education he's going to take me to an organization and, and you can imagine what was going inside me till today i don't know why i said yes but that yes made all the difference in my life i went in the organization got education uh, came to know who god is who jesus is because i am from a hindu background i have no clue so after getting to know this i started to um, be really intelligent really good in my studies I 
don't even know how. I, I, I looked up, I wanted to go somewhere um, and I was looking in different parts of Asia and Africa and different places and I have no idea how I ended up going to India but I just, I, I clicked this, um, this, uh, th this trip and I decided, okay, I'll go to India. That's how most of my life decisions are made, really random and uh, it kind of God just works it out. But um, so I went to Kolkata um, in 2013 um, and just love, fell in love with the place, fell in love with the people, with the children. And I think I've always had it within me, um, just this thing of um, seeing the needs of others and realizing how fortunate that I am and um, just wanting to go and to help and I think um, knowing God and I suppose what he had done for me and I suppose who God is, is that God of compassion, you know, for the really vulnerable and the, the you know, the least in society. So I went in 2013 and then I went back in 2014 and then after I graduated here, um, I went to, uh, to um, live in India um, for a year and to volunteer there um, at a children's home. Um, and that was just so, such a special, precious time where I feel that I just learnt so much um, and just learnt so much of what God can do and in, the, in stories and in, in, in children and in, in people that have, you know, given up their lives to, to, to serve um, the community there. Um, both in India and sort of outside of India so um, it just my life took a total other direction and um, that is I suppose where I, I met Raju um, and we were friends we were friends for a long time um, he had this amazing gift and I don't know where he, he got this gift but Although I was from outside and I was, I suppose, a foreigner to him, he saw me as, um, we were able to, to, to connect on a level of, you know, he saw me as from outside, but also that I, I could do it, uh, things that the Indian community did as well. And it was just, God had given me just this real picture that he was gonna be this great leader. Um, and when we first met, you were really struggling. You were having a really hard time. Um, yeah, yeah, I was having a really hard time, as she mentioned. Like I, my relationship with God, even though I was a Christian, um, I didn't have a healthy relationship with God. I was as if I was on the run from God. The only way I can describe myself at that time was like Jonah. Every time He called me, I was on the run, and that's where God brought her into my life, and. I suppose I had just always had this picture from God that actually God had chosen him and had this incredible plan for him. Um, and I, you know, it was totally understandable why you were having difficulties. You know, you've had such difficult experiences, but I had just this heart that um, God was really going to use him. And so over the years of friendship, um, we kept in touch and um, I suppose just encouraged one another and we were, you know, we were friends. Um, and then one day Raju came up to me and said, one day I want to marry you <laughs> in an extremely um, non-intense way. <laughs> um, <laughs> Um, and I suppose because of the what I had what I had kind of felt then, um, that was then. I suppose we both knew, you know, one day we want to get married. Um, well, I I, so, I saw her as someone that I can actually easily open up to, because I was not a guy that would easily open up to anyone. Because I've been through a lot. And until and unless I felt that kind of sense and security that someone would actually love me and accept me who I am, um, that was one of my priority. I want someone to accept me and who I am and not judge me from where I come. And when I found that in her, I was literally like, I just can't help it. I just can't help it. <laughs> I had finished my time in India and I came back here um, and 
you went to Bangalore then to do Bible college and we had a period for about two and a half years mm -hmm. um, where we weren't in the same country and um, we stayed in contact and I think a lot of people that hear our story they're like what do you know you, you weren't together you weren't in the same country but um, actually for us now that we look back we see that as a real formative time that God that was um, a gift to us although the waiting was really hard and I think the waiting was hard because we didn't know what was going to happen you know ultimately we didn't know would we ever live in the same country would we ever get married those were you know the wait waiting is really hard and in seasons of waiting I never want to minimize seasons of waiting and um, but I think often we look back and we see that that waiting time you know was planned like God planned that it, it, you know for good I suppose for us you know growing separately in our own communities and in you know our work spheres and our studies and um, and then just growing in communication you know we didn't do normal dates like going to the cinema or anything like that because we were in different countries for us um, and I, I suppose for me it's like um, in terms of Raju's story you know that has just I have learned so much through that and um, that has enriched our lives so much you know I suppose you talked earlier about you know at times you know people in society that have been through difficulties or have been through vulnerabilities and um, can can be looked on down on maybe or you know people expect less of them or you know they can just struggle I think internally at times you've struggled with feeling negative about yourself and actually you know what a privilege it is to you know be loved by you and to love you um, I was actually at a, um, a, com a seminar a, a while ago and they were talking about how you know looked after children, children in care, children from difficult backgrounds, they're like superheroes um, and so they have to adapt the, to their surroundings and they're so strong, they, you know, they live in they live in the unimaginable you know the real difficulties and they survive and it's like all that you have survived has you know god has used that to shape and to mold you and to become so protective to become so caring to be, to, to be able to love really deeply at times when people hear our story what i never want them to hear is this this fairy tale because of course there's deep joy and happiness and fun and laughter um, but the, the journey has been difficult at times and um, what you've experienced, that the pain and the difficulty, um, you know, God didn't plan that, you know, God didn't want you to get lost from your, your mom, but you know, this world is broken and you know, there is societal difficulties, there's poverty, there's all these things and it's actually, but like God redeemed it and brought healing and I suppose, in our two individual stories, that's why I think it's incredible. I think that God plan, like had this plan to bring two people from, you know, separate difficulties and experiences, but brought it together to, to, to redeem those things. He was writing this story and it wasn't always in our timing. You know, it, it certainly wasn't. And, but actually we see how the decisions that we were making, ultimately God had this bigger picture. Yeah, marriage has been a really, really um, important aspect of my life because not having a family for so long and then suddenly having a family, it's a massive difference. Now you get to enjoy the beauty of having someone that you can rely on, that you can share everything with, that you can actually let the person know that you care about them. The other person is like a family. God worked through different people. God worked within me and God worked through her and God is still working. I'm not perfect, but God is still working. Yes, I have difficulties and everything. And I, as I said earlier, I'm just a tiny piece of a jigsaw that needs to fit in out there into the world that is.
completely jumbled up and he's going to use he's going to build up people out there who has the same voice as me who has the same story as me but doesn't have someone to sit down and say at that time reach out in the community and probably you'll hear stories that'll just blow you away how many people are there preoccupied with their own life other than just stepping out in the society and just thinking about let me get to hear your story tell me about it Thank mm -hmm. you.